half a percent, one two hundredth of the world's economy, can produce the second largest beer maker in the world, that became the largest beer maker in China, that acquired one of America's greatest brewing companies, that built brands across Europe and Latin America. It is this frontier mentality of we can get on with it, we can do it, we've got the resilience and we've got the energy to get that right. It is precisely the hybridity of South Africa, the mix of values and cultures and energies, our story that sometimes is so awkward to tell and sometimes has not yet left us, that how we've got in the room is a tough story for all of us. And that this great center of the South African economy is a story of very difficult things. And yet we're a generation called upon to move beyond that and create something new. And I deeply believe that our frontier spirit that got us in the room is going to get us out of the room. Because as I start to wrap up, let me just share a few thoughts about what lies ahead. We have great assets. Let me share some of our killer apps. You see how I'm getting with the technology <laughs> language. What are our killer apps? I've mentioned one, a very strong private sector. Our banks are in the top five in the world. Our auditors are in the top five in the world. Our stock market is ranked for governance as number one in the world. We have depth and capacity. We are a services economy. 65% of our GDP is services, not mining, not manufacturing, not farming, but services. That's the South African economy. It's a modern economy. We've got a great private sector. We are fortunate or unfortunate, depending on how you think, to speak the global language of English. And if the Chinese could, they would impose Chinese on us all, but they can't. So they're all learning English. There are 350 million Chinese who can speak some form of English more than in America right now. We are blessed with that language. We speak English, and it's a great big soft plus. We're in a fantastic time zone, something we never think about. But we're in a very central time zone, in the European time zone, with the east and west on either side. We've got fabulous infrastructure for a country of our size. And I know we middle class people hate the potholes and the traffic lights that don't work, but you go and compare that to any other country of our size economy and you will come back as I do, <coughs> absolutely amazed what we've got. So we've got the infrastructure. In spite of the challenges of our universities, UCT is the number one ranked brick university in the world. Think about that. We've got a great inheritance of infrastructure and institutions. And that's a big, big killer app. We've got a billion people on this incredible continent. This is a billion people untouched by the services, largely untouched by the services that you and I took for granted by nine o'clock this morning. And I grew up in Nairobi and I know the Kenyans hustle. They've got faster walking speed than us and they've got confidence about Kenya. But when you look at the numbers, we should be major players in this continent. Our future lies north. And that's really where we're going to make our bones. We are a country with capacity to assist, not to tell, but to assist and partner with the continent. And that's really where the natural resources and the human resources of the future lie. I, I'm bold enough to say I don't think we're going to out-innovate Silicon Valley in anyone's lifetime in the room. And I don't think we might produce products cheaper than China in the near future. But Africa is our domain and we're an African country. And increasingly as the decades roll by, we will all deepen that understanding of what it means to be African. And so I'm deeply inspired by these killer apps. They're powerful. We have a big middle class. The middle class maybe doesn't assert itself enough, enough, but it will in time. It will assemble an argument of what it means to be South African and what it means to trust each other and what it means to lead in a world that is changing as quickly as it does. So let me end by saying we do need more infrastructure, mainly technology. The game of infrastructure used to be the railways, now it's broadband. And if we don't invest in high quality broadband, you cut yourself out of the economy. We need to run great institutions, whether it's the state 
or the private sector or the social sector, governance and quality leadership and accountability are the center of great institutions. And we need to learn the importance of that because you can lose a country if you're careless and you can make one if you're not. And we in this room and the leaders here play a key role in making sure that happens. But let me come to the last I after infrastructure and institutions and talk about individuals. I spent many years in the States studying and working and I've always been inspired by the American notion that individuals can really make a difference. And if you study American society, and of course no one should copy anyone else because we all have a different story, but if you look at the focus and the leverage that great individuals make in a team, in an organization, and in a country, we have to focus on the needs and the skills and the dreams of individuals. And that's what this kind of business does. It finds the right person for the right place at the right time in the right team. So I hope in reflecting on why we've come tonight that the South Africans, my fellow South Africans, enter 2016. It's going to be a fast-paced year. The world does not need your permission to change. I've always realized that our rate of learning must be faster than the rate of change if we're going to lead. And so I wish you well, not just with this year, but with this phase of South Africa's life. As we deepen the economic debate, as we deepen the transformation debate, as we deepen the political debate, to ask ourselves, what is South Africa about? Let me end by saying what individuals bring and what great institutions bring is a lovely German word. A German word taught to me by an MBA student in Europe last year, and I'm going to teach it to you because it's a lovely word to know how to say. It's called Fingerspitzengefühl. <laughs> Did anyone get that? Fingerspitzengefühl. And that means the sensitivity in the tips of your fingers. That's what great leaders are about. It's not just the technical. It's not just the financial. It's not just the managerial. But it's this feeling, the sensitivity that we have so much in South Africa. Our humanity, our ability to be the other, our ability to explore that finger spitzen gefühl. So tomorrow when someone says, where were you? And you say, I was at a cool party in a tent in Stanton, celebrating Stanton Chase, you'll say, and I learnt a bit, and I'm thinking about my finger spitzengefühl. <laughs> I wish you well, and I thank you so much for giving me the floor. Thank you.